Okay, we're now going to solve a similar problem, but this time we're going to, again, a confidence interval, but this time the sigma, which is the standard deviation of the original population, is unknown. Well, if we try to apply the formula x bar plus or minus z times the standard deviation over the square root of n to this new situation, it can't be done because the sigma, the sigma is an unknown quantity. Now, we know for the spinner assignment, it's 2.87, but in real life, if you don't know the average of the population, and the reason why you don't know it is because you don't have access to the whole, every individual in the population, then you wouldn't be able to calculate the standard deviation of the population as well. Now, you can't substitute some arbitrary number, like 0 or 1, and you can't substitute. So the, the, the solution that we decided in class is that you basically pick the sample standard deviation. If you have a sample of numbers that make up your average, have those same numbers do double duty, and besides calculating the average, you can calculate the standard deviation, which of course is this formula in chapter 3, x minus x bar squared over n minus 1, this whole thing square rooted. Uh, that formula will be a good substitute for the standard deviation of the population. It's not perfect, but because it's not perfect, and we still want to be 95% confident to be specific. Of course, we're not limited to 95%, but that's conventional. We could substitute this number, but we're going to have to basically increase the width of our confidence interval to accommodate the fact that now we have two unknowns. We're not really sure if the uh, we're looking for a 95% confidence interval on mu. We're not really sure what the mu is, so we're not sure if the average is really how close it is to the mu, or we're not that sure. And we're not sure if the standard deviation that we calculated based on this relatively small sample or any sample is going to be an accurate representation of the true sigma. As again, most of the time we're pretty close, but that's, that there is a certain percentage of time will be off by a little bit. So in order to still be 95% confident, common sense would dictate that we have to uh, increase the width of the interval. And the way you would, but the width of the interval will be increased as a function of the sample size, because when the sample size is very large, then this number here, s and sigma, will be very, very similar. This is what we're trying to estimate the sigma. But if the sample size is small, then these numbers might be very, for the sigma, the, the sigma and the s might be very far from each other. So therefore, uh, the amount of stretching to maintain 95% confidence depends upon when you substitute the s for the sigma, it depends upon uh, the sample size. So all this is done for you automatically by going to the t-table as opposed to the z-table. So the formula we're going to use now is the same, basically the basic average. We're still going to, uh, we're going to go to the t-table as opposed to the z-table. We'll see that, and we're going to multiply it by sigma. So I'm sorry, it's going to be s now. It's not going to be sigma. I wish I could erase these things. S over the square root of n. All right, so um, so I figured out how to erase it, but I think I erased too much. Ninety-five percent. Oh, back back to the drawing board. Um, so we're trying to find a ninety-five percent. Oh man, now it's changed colors. Ninety-five percent confidence interval on mu. So the formula that we're going to use now, pardon my, my color, uh, is instead of going to the z table, we go to the t table, we substitute the standard deviation of the sample where the standard deviation of the population was previously used, and we're still going to use the sample size on the bottom. Now, so using the same example we had before, imagine we took five numbers, and the average of the sample came out to 5.8, uh, 4.8. We plug in a 4.8 here. We increase it by a certain amount. That amount will depend partly on the t, which in turn depends upon the sample size. And we'll do that in a moment. We'll, put, we'll plug that number in here. And we know the sample size is 5. We can plug that in immediately. But what we don't know is what is the standard deviation of the sample. So we're going to have, again, I can, we take those five numbers, the same five numbers we did a second ago, and plug them into this formula for the standard deviation. And 
the answer theoretically should be 2.87, but let's say it came out to 2.64. The numbers are slightly closer together than typically spread out between 0 and 9. This, again, this is this made-up number. This is a made-up number. And in order to calculate the proper amount of stretching, we need to know go to the T-table. But I told you a moment, a moment ago that the T-table, which is very similar to the Z, it's a bell-shaped curve, but it's more stretched out so that the the middle value is Z, zero, but the spread is more than one. But that spread depends upon the sample size. And technically, because the standard deviation has an N minus one on the bottom, we look up not N, but N minus one, and we call that this sample size minus one, the degrees of freedom. So in our example, where there's five, a sample of five and a degree of freedom of four, you go to the back of the T-table, look up, Again, we still want 95% between the two parts of the, which part of the table combined, cuts off or contains 95%. But this time, the construction of the table focuses on the right side of the table. So it's going to still be 1 minus 95 divided by 2, which is still 0, 0, 025. And you're looking up 0, 025 column of the T table, but you're going to go down to row number degree of freedom equal to 4. Degree of freedom equal to 4, which is the fourth row of the table, and I hope you're going to see there 1.5332. 1.5332. The fact that it's a negative sign is, is also the plus or minus is built into the formula, so you don't have to necessarily fill in the negative sign here. You just bring the 1.5332 to that spot in the formula we waited to the end to fill out, and now we calculate the yeah, square root of 5 into 2.64 is roughly 1.2. 1.2 times 1.5 is a roughly uh, 1.7, 1.8. You add that to 4.8, etc., cetera, and um, we end up with a pair of numbers, which I don't have a calculator with me right now. You know, maybe we, can, we, we should fill, I'll, I'll pause it and calculate it and come back to you. So, um, so in the process of calculating the confidence interval, which came out to in the process of calculating the confidence interval, which came out to three to six point six, I believe is the answer to that calculation. Um, I erased the board, which I think should be still there from the previous, so let's write it again. The formula we used was x bar plus or minus t times s over n. And I plugged in an x bar, just make believe, and the average came out of the five, we took a sample of five numbers, n equals five, and they happen to be whatever they are, irrelevant, but they came out to 4.8, the standard deviation came out to 2.64, and the T came out to 1.5332. From that T diagram, the sample size was 5, and after plugging this into a calculator, we got 3 to 6.6. Um, in summary, if we, under these conditions, if we're trying to estimate the confidence, 80%, uh, I'm sorry, this was, I, I apologize, this 1.5332, I realize now it was a mistake. I'm using the spinner assignment where we're trying to get um, an 80% confidence. So the previous thing is now obsolete. If it's 80%, that means this piece here is the missing 10%. And if you can't see it in the picture, you can do it by a little formula, 1 minus 80 divided by 2, which is 20 over 2, which is 10%. The degree of freedom, just to repeat, of n minus 1, in the case of the spinner assignment with a sample size of 5 is 4, and that number from the t table will be 1.5332. So I think my previous calculation was wrong. I was trying to do 95%. That has a, a higher, because it's more spread. 5% will be here, it's more spread out. Um, and that's it for the demonstration of the two different formulas Well, I just demonstrated in this film, the um, formula for calculating a confidence interval 
under the situation of, of the mean, which right, the mu is the unknown here. That's our goal. And we're, we have a sample, of a sample and, a, and an average, and we calculated the standard deviation of that sample, of that, of that data, and we ended up with a, um, a pair of numbers that represents the 80% confidence interval. Uh, 